This is the last weekend of the campaign. Hillary Clinton getting celebrity support overnight from Beyonce and Jay-Z and the Pantsuit Squad. They're singing her praises. Can she make history? A glass ceiling to crack once and for all. Mad Dash, Donald Trump's whirlwind tour. Ten states in three days. Taking aim at Clinton's celebrity endorsements. I didn't have to bring J Lo or Jay Z. The only way she gets anybody. I'm here all by myself. All this as a former People magazine writer speaks out on camera for the first time since accusing Trump of sexual assault. Plus, our latest ABC News tracking poll on the state of the race. Also this morning, more victims. The widening investigation after a woman was found chained inside of a shipping container. Now, a new and grisly find. This is bad. The suspect's court appearance and what his alleged victim has told police. And taking the stand, the key witness who caught this police shooting on camera. <laughs> now telling his story at the officer's murder trial. He shoot the man running from him. A powerful testimony. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. I can't believe it. Here we are, T minus three days until the election, and Hillary Clinton is waking up this morning with what can be characterized as a clear but not entirely comfortable lead. According to our latest ABC News tracking poll, there are the numbers Clinton up by four points, 47. To 43. The two candidates with two very different strategies in these final hours and days. There was Hillary overnight with Jay-Z and Beyonce. I believe the pantsuit squad was nearby as yeah, well. Standing by in the wings. Standing by, ready to dance. Meantime, surrogates, including President Obama and former President Clinton, fanning out across the battleground states. Donald Trump, by contrast, going it mostly alone, pointing out overnight that he was still able to draw a large crowd with no big celebrities by his side. A point of pride for him. Mm -hmm. So what is the outlook as we near the end of this long and for many of us intensely anxiety provoking campaign. Our analysts are standing by, but we're going to start here this morning with ABC's Cecilia Vega, who's been covering the Clinton campaign from the start and is ready for a nap. Cecilia, good morning to you. <laughs> can I just sleep right here? Yes, you can. <laughs> good morning. After you tell us what's happening. Thank you. you. Well, you said it. It is hard to believe, but we are now down to just hours before Election Day. Hillary Clinton, in her final push, has that well oiled Democratic machine out in force on this last weekend. Nearly a million volunteers across the country knocking on doors, making calls, trying to get to a record number of voters and get them to the polls, not to mention calling in some famous friends. Overnight in the battleground of Ohio, the campaign trail looked like this. Okay, ladies, now let's get information. Queen B making a surprise appearance at a get out the vote rally for Hillary Clinton, wearing none other than a pantsuit of her own. The superstar not only offering her singing praise. Less than 100 years ago, women did not have the right to vote. Look how far we've come from having no voice to being on the brink of making history. But also her ringing endorsement. I want my daughter to grow up seeing a woman lead our country. I'm with her. The power couple in Cleveland. We are on the doorsteps of history. Where Clinton joined them backstage before stepping into the spotlight. I am so energized after this concert. And I got to say, didn't you love the pantsuits? Potential payoff for Clinton, huge. Thousands lined up for a coveted ticket distributed not at all by chance, right next to a polling site. Her final push, a star-studded affair. From Stevie Wonder in Philadelphia to Mark Cuban in Pittsburgh. Even former foe Bernie Sanders in Ohio, Vice President Joe Biden in Wisconsin, and President Obama jumping in the fray in North Carolina, mincing no words about Trump's own words. Who calls women pigs and dogs and slobs? It's like uh, suddenly reality TV has entered into the race for the presidency. And Clinton is now calling in more big names. Katy Perry joins her tonight. Tomorrow, LeBron James. Clinton heads back to Ohio tomorrow. This will be her fourth trip there in just the last couple weeks. That shows you how valuable that battleground is.
cavalcade of stars for her. Cecilia, thank you. We know you'll be with her every step of the way. Uh, and as we said, Trump was out on the trail speaking with pride about the size of the crowds he's attracting, even without the aforementioned cavalcade of stars. He's in the middle of a 10-state barnstorming tour in the final weekend before the election. He's going to be holding a rally in Tampa this morning. And ABC's ace campaign reporter Tom Yamas is right there. Hey, Tom, good morning. Dan, good morning to you. In these final days, Donald Trump is very much a party of one. His family is also out there campaigning, but at his rallies, Donald Trump usually is the only big name. Like most of his campaign, he's doing this on his own. I didn't have to bring J-Lo or Jay-Z, the only way she gets anybody. I'm here all by myself. Overnight, Donald Trump rallying a massive crowd in Hershey, Pennsylvania. When we win on November 8th, we are going to drain the swamp. But amid the cheering and yelling, an emotional moment from a mother who just lost her son, Riley Roan, in a car accident. Riley was a Trump campaign volunteer. Mr. Trump said he would give everything he owned if it would bring my Riley back. Please, please, please vote for Mr. Donald Trump in my son's honor. But after that moment, Trump lit into Hillary Clinton, saying decorated veterans who support him blasted her. And I refuse to tell you what they said, but it wasn't good, believe me. Can you imagine these people taking orders? These great people taking orders from her? And the Republican nominee repeating a false claim on the campaign trail based on a bogus Fox News story. The FBI now has multiple open criminal investigations going on Hillary Clinton. Lots of bad things are happening. Fox News calling their report a mistake. That just wasn't inartful. It was a mistake. And for that, I'm sorry. But Trump still pushing the discredited story and also calling out President Obama for campaigning with Hillary. He's like a cheerleader. He's jumping up and down all over the place for Hillary. He shouldn't be doing that. He shouldn't be with her. He's got to be working. Now, Trump starts his day here in Tampa, Florida, then he heads to North Carolina, then Nevada, and he finishes in Colorado with a late-night rally, likely working till midnight. Paula? A mad dash to the finish for Trump, Tom, thank you. And with just three days to go before voters hit the polls, a former People magazine writer is speaking out on camera for the first time since accusing Donald Trump of sexual assault. With more on what she's saying and why she's coming forward now, Mary Bruce joins us from our D.C. Bureau. Mary, good morning to you. Paula, good morning. Well, she had stayed quiet while Trump denied her story and hit back at her on the campaign trail. But Natasha Stoinoff says she's commenting now because she wants to support other women to share their stories. This morning, Natasha Stoinoff is speaking out on camera for the first time since accusing Donald Trump of sexual assault. Three weeks after her claims were first published by People, the magazine's former writer sits down with its editor-in-chief. I wanted to show all the women who wrote to me that I could be brave enough to do it because I feel like if I am brave enough to do this here, maybe they will be brave enough to. In her recent letter, Stoinoff alleged Trump cornered her in 2005 at his Mar-a-Lago residence in Florida while she was there to interview him and his then pregnant wife. Writing, we walked into that room alone and Trump shut the door behind us. I turned around and within seconds he was pushing me against the wall and forcing his tongue down my throat. Trump denies it ever happened, and her story has not been confirmed by ABC News. The Republican nominee has jobs. slammed Stoinoff's story and money. other we accusations of alleged misconduct as lies. Trump has said that he is going to sue all the women who have come forward. Um, does that worry you? I look at that as an attempt to silence women. Now, despite the personal pushback from Trump, Stoinoff says she has no regrets about taking her story public, that the positive response from women has made it all worth it. Dan and Paula. Mary Bruce, thank you. Okay, for the latest uh, analysis on this wild race, let's bring in two ABC News political analysts, Matthew Dowd and Kristen Soltis Anderson, otherwise known as KSA. That's what we call her behind the scenes here. Uh, okay, guys, uh, we're, we're three days out. Um, what's your prediction for how this thing's going to go on Tuesday? Matt, we'll start with you, and then we'll go to Chris. Well, if you look at the, all of the data that's come together, the state polls, the national polls, and all of that data, it basically says Hillary Clinton is likely to win a victory in close proximity to what Obama won in 2012, 
a three or four point victory. It seems that with the polls, our poll has it at four. Uh, other polls have it at two, one. It's all sort of come together for a, for a three or four point victory. All right, Kristen, you're a professional pollster. What's your prognosis? It may be the case that Hillary Clinton winds up with a margin of victory similar to Obama's, but the states that she uses to get there may look a little bit different. Right now, there's polling and early vote data in places like Ohio that are looking pretty good for Donald Trump. Wouldn't be a surprise at all to see that state go from Democratic to Republican territory. On the other hand, early vote data in places like Florida and Nevada are showing huge increases in Hispanic turnout early on. That's likely to benefit <clears throat> Hillary Clinton and put those states much more likely to be in her camp. Uh, so it remains to be seen how Hillary Clinton will, uh, which path she'll take, but it is more likely than not that she was going to win this election a few days from now. And Kristen, you just mentioned the Hispanic turnout. Matt, let's start with you. How big of an influence, how important of a role do you think that minority bloc will be in this election? Well, if Hillary Clinton wins on election night, she will have won with the most diverse coalition of voters than any president has ever won with. with, with when you look at African-American votes, Asian votes, and Latino votes, I think there's a possibility that the story on election night is this huge wave of Latino votes. It's funny that the Trump campaign has been talking about the secret hidden vote that's going to show up at the polls. Right now, from looking at the early votes and a lot of the data, the secret hidden vote seems to be a huge Latino wave sweeping across the country. And Kristen, can we go? Can we look at the map with you? How unprecedented is it that both New Hampshire, which is traditionally a blue state, I believe, has voted blue in five of the last six presidential races, uh, and Georgia, traditionally red, seem to be up for grabs this close to the election? Exactly. There are a lot of states that, because of the demographics of the state, are likely to flip columns in, in the end. So New Hampshire, a state where the population is not necessarily as diverse, um, lots of those non-college white voters that Donald Trump does so well with, that's a state that was potentially off the table that has come back on the table in recent days. On the other hand, North Carolina and along with it Georgia, states that have large African American populations, lots of college educated voters, groups that have tended to break for Hillary Clinton. So the traditional red-blue divide is starting to cut a little differently because of the new demographic coalitions that these candidates are putting together. All right, Kristen. Um, otherwise known as KSA. KSA or the notorious 72 KSA. hours. Yeah. Not 73 <laughs> if you have to count daylight savings time. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. <laughs> that's right. It's like a, a, a leap uh, final three so days. That, that just means we have to wait one more hour one to more vote. One more extra hour. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that reminder. <laughs> Matt and Kristen, thank you. And a reminder, everybody, you can download the ABC News app to get live streaming breaking news reports from the final days on the campaign trail. And we're going to be here right when the polls close Tuesday night. George Stephanopoulos will be anchoring live coverage all through the the night with our entire political team starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. Dan, you're going to be um, headlining our digital coverage, and you'll have a special report on Nightline throughout the evening as well in the morning. It's going to be a long, exciting, and historic night, and ABC News will be with you every step of the way. And speaking of the campaign, there is a major headline this morning involving one of Donald Trump's most public supporters, the governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. Two of Christie's former aides have been convicted of conspiracy and fraud in the so-called Bridgegate scandal. Christie has now canceled a planned trip for Trump this weekend, and David Wright is on the story from New Jersey. Hey, David, good morning to you. Good morning, Dan. And there is the bridge that gave the scandal its name. It looks beautiful this morning, but this was the scene of a traffic jam caused on purpose with serious repercussions even now. Governor Christie was due to be out on the campaign trail with Donald Trump today until those guilty verdicts came back. Now we won't see it. This morning, the traffic jam that brought the George Washington Bridge to a standstill continues to haunt the men and women accused of making it happen, allegedly as payback for a New Jersey mayor who refused to endorse New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Bridget Ann Kelly and Bill Baroni were both top Christie aides. This is not over. I assure you, we're going to have another news conference. Both of them convicted Friday on all nine counts. I am innocent of these charges. Christie felt it necessary to reassert his innocence. Let me be clear once again, he said in a statement, I had no knowledge prior to or during these lane reassignments and had no role in authorizing them. No believable evidence was presented to contradict that fact.
But in the trial, witnesses testified he was deeply involved in the traffic jam and the cover-up, even as he insisted otherwise. The scandal crippled Christie's candidacy for president. It also may have cost him a shot at the vice presidency, too. Trump reportedly offered him the job, but withdrew it out of concern this November trial might end up being a distraction, even though Trump has made it clear he likes Christie. I do have confidence in him, and I hope it all works out well for him. Christie is now in charge of the transition team if Trump should win on Tuesday. His aides, they're headed to jail. These convictions carry a maximum sentence of 20 years behind bars, but they'll likely get a lot less time. Paula? Interesting to see if he'll stay on that transition team. David, thank you. We want to move now to that disturbing story out of South Carolina. Investigators there are digging on the property where a missing woman was found alive, chained and caged like an animal. And now, they have made yet another grisly discovery, fearing they could have a serial killer on their hands, and ABC's Eva Pilgrim has more. This morning, the search for more victims after a grisly find in these South Carolina woods, an unidentified body. We're not going to be done here uh, until we, like I said earlier, are 100% sure uh, that we don't have any more evidence to go over. Local real estate agent Todd Kolhep appearing in court charged in the kidnapping of Kayla Brown, allegedly held captive for two months before being rescued from a steel shipping container on his property. This is um, super tragic. I mean, it's, this is bad. Brown telling police her boyfriend, Charles Carver, who disappeared with her in late August, was killed at the hands of the suspect. She witnessed the defendant shoot Charles David Carver. Carver's family sitting in a hearing listening to solicitor Barry Barnett lay out the details before a judge. The chief prosecutor saying investigators honed in on this rural area after tracing Brown's last cell phone pings to a nearby tower and finding social media conversations between Brown and Kolhep. During their search of the property, they heard desperate banging from the container and found Brown. She was, um, had a neck to her chain as well as to her ankle. The Cargo was locked several times with several different locks they had to go through to get to her. Kolhep has not yet entered a plea or made a comment on this case, but in a statement to ABC News, his mother had only this to say. I'm so, so sorry. I just can't believe this. Kolhep does not have an attorney at this time. As for investigators, they will spend the weekend searching that property. They have a lot of work ahead of them, almost 100 acres to go through. Dan and Paula. Eva, just an awful story. Eva, thank you for your reporting this morning. Let's send things over to Rob Marciano for a look at the weather. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, guys. Have some incredible pictures to show you out of El Paso, Texas. Take a look at this. This is hail uh, that accumulated across uh, El Paso at times, shutting down in Interstate 10 with some drainage piling up three, four, five, six inches of accumulation, not snow. Hail, and this is from a stubborn low pressure that's over the four corners right now. We'll look for rain across uh, parts of New Mexico. Flash flooding there yesterday. Probably see a little bit more today. Highway 27 closed for a time. Two to three inches of rain getting into Texas as well. And ahead of that, though, we continue this very, very mild trend across the center part of the country. Temperatures way above normal for a spectacular Saturday. That's a quick check on what's going on nationally. Here now is your local forecast. As we kick off the weekend, we're off to quite a cold start for this morning. 34 right now in Cumberland, 30 in Manassas, 47 in D.C. So make sure you take those heavy coats if you are headed out for an early breakfast. We do have a frost advisory in effect for Prince William and Stafford County. That does include Orange County as well until 10 a.m. Now into the afternoon, we should heat up into the mid 60s. It'll feel comfortable for the afternoon, actually above average and mostly sunny skies. College football, the New York City Marathon, and something called the election, all impacted by weather. More on that in about 15 minutes. Guys, back to you. Quite a tease. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right, what's cooking in the news department? Uh, we got a lot of news. Uh, good morning, everyone. We're going to begin with the verdict in that libel trial of uh, Rolling Stone magazine. A federal jury finding Rolling Stone is publisher and a journalist defamed a University of Virginia dean in an article. That article by Sabrina Rubin was about a UVA co-ed who claimed that she had been raped on campus, but uh, that claim was later debunked. And the story retracted by Rolling Stone, UVA Dean Nicole Eramo said her reputation was harmed by the portrayal of her as unresponsive to sexual attacks. Uh, she is seeking $7.5 million in damages. And breaking news overnight from Oakland, California, at least five people were wounded in a shooting outside of a nightclub just a block away from City Hall. Police saying as many as three gunmen 
were involved in that shooting. It doesn't seem, though, that the injuries, uh, those injured, were life-threatening injuries. So far, no arrests. And Brandon Vandenberg, the former Vanderbilt University football player, allegedly encouraged teammates to sexually assault an unconscious female student in his dorm room. He has been sentenced to 17 years behind bars. That incident occurred three years ago. One of his former teammates is already serving a sentence for rape. Two others uh, have charges pending. And in St. Paul, Minnesota, police are now apologizing for the takedown of an unarmed African-American man.